So uh, I will do a brief introduction, well, 20 minutes introduction in English, but of course you can ask me in Spanish, Catalan, Korean, whatever, uh, about uh, the stuff we are going to be working with in the workshop. Uh, the workshop is about customer segmentation. This is actually, segmentation is more like a marketing thing for us. Programmers is more like customer clustering. But I have to sell this to my boss, so I have to use his words. Uh, thank you for the sponsor, you know them. This is me. I have been developing websites the whole 21st century. Last two years at uh, Tula Box, which is an online supermarket, in the case you don't know it. And uh, I like machine learning. I'm not an expert. I'm just a hobbyist. Uh, this is my hobby. So perhaps I cannot answer all the questions you're going to ask me, but we will try to. And this is my, you know, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. So this is the most important thing. You should be downloading, especially the Docker container. And uh, machine learning is actually my objective for this year. It's like at the beginning of the year, I tried to set a focus a focus point on something and I decided that machine learning should be interesting to learn and to practice. Basically because it's the new whole thing, but for me the, the point that changed things was last year AlphaGo beating Isedol. I don't know if you know about this. Anybody knows? No? Yes? No? No? Okay. It's this game, this is the game of Go, this is actually Isedol is the strongest player in the world. I have met him personally, so I know, because I play Go, actually. I'm in the top 10, top 15 in Spain. So for me, it was an incredible thing. And the thing is, like, uh, usually every five years, you have a new whole thing, like it was mobile first, big data 10 years ago. And then five years later, not so many people still speak about big data or these things. But I have the feeling and the intuition that machine learning is going to stay with us. And every programmer should end up learning machine learning and using it. Because you can apply to so many different things that uh, you can avoid it. So I have some university background, but I need to learn more, and I try to learn starting with the uh, famous Coursera videos. It didn't work for me. And actually, later I try with books, and you know, it depends the way you, you learn, or you prefer learning. And uh, learning is a good thing, but I have to find an excuse to apply it. And the problem is, like, I'm not the kind of late night hacker that don't sleep and try things. But I'm mostly a person that when arrives home, he wants to enjoy time with his girlfriend, his cat, whatever. So I have to find some excuse at work to use machine learning. And I found one last year, at the end of last year, which was uh, in Ola Box. We have a a business analyst department, three people who are not programmers, so they do some kind of business analysis with Excel, which is like the devil, it's the worst thing I have ever seen. And they do some kind of analysis looking for, how to say, uh, trying to make in business reports, but if this is not useful. It's useful for the company in the sense like uh, they try, for instance, uh, to segment customer using the periodicity of orders and the amount spent in each order. And this could be interesting for 
like the CEO or CMO or, or CFO, but for people like us, programmers, that we have to try to improve the, for instance, the user experience, it's not a good segmentation. Actually, the real problem was like, uh, the, we have a customer relationship management department in Ola Box, and the girl who uh, is the boss in that department asked me about this, like, okay, I have this kind of customers, but you know, when a customer calls us, like, we have to hang the, the phone, hang the phone and say, okay, uh, what's the problem? But in like three seconds, I have to know which kind of customer is. And what you cannot do is like you, you can, you have no time to enter the back office and see, okay, this customer, ah, okay, this customer is buying drinks, he's buying things. It's like, no, you have to, outside, know which kind of customer is. So I said, okay, that's a good idea. And we can actually use the last orders of this customer to get some idea of which kind of customer it is. So I tried to apply this, uh, let's say this buying behavior, clustering orders. So we will be clustering orders, not clustering uh, customers. It's a bit small difference, but at the end it's like, if you know a customer who is buying for, or his last order was this and the previous order was this, you can get a better idea about him. Uh, I will introduce briefly some general concept of machine learning in the case you haven't seen them. Basically, the modern method to apply machine learning is like you have some page data, you use it to create some model, the model is like you input the data, you choose some algorithm, you tune this algorithm, you test this algorithm is going well, and when you see, when you see that this model is like predicting correctly things, you try it with new data. Like you deploy this model, because it doesn't make sense that you create a model and then you don't use it in production. In the sense, uh, the, the, the real use of a machine learning model is like to use with new data. So you can predict or you can get information about the new data is coming from the, the, like the future or, or the present. So actually, these uh, five steps, like cleaning the data, choosing which algorithm you use, turning that algorithm, deploying a pipeline with the model so it works in real time, and then updating the model with the new data is coming, are uh, really, really the five steps we usually do in machine learning. And the problem is when you read about machine learning, you normally know about this part, which is like, oh, you know, it's a new algorithm, it's called random forest, oh, wow. But you have, to use, you have to do the rest, which is not that funny. Uh, in machine learning, we have uh, basically three types of problems, supervised problems, which is we have some data and some labels and we have to predict with new data the label. I will show you an example later. In this workshop, otherwise we, we, we will be using unsupervised, which is just giving data and finding shapes in the data. And also I, uh, another way to learn is with reinforcement, where you give the model a way to know if the result is good or bad. It's like in the AlphaGo case, they use this. But it's not that common. For supervised learning, it's quite easy. It's like you give the model a picture and you say, it's a cat. You give the model a picture, it's a cat. You give a model a picture and you say, it's me. And then you 
test the model and say, okay, what's this? Quite easy. For the unsupervised learning, you give this, 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 and this. And there is no test. And this is kind of, oh, what the fuck? What is the model going to do? That's a funny and difficult thing to understand in the sense like, okay, what can I, what could I learn from these pictures? It's like, okay, there's some kind of animal, perhaps in some pictures you see the face, in some pictures you see the complete body. I don't know. It's like you try to, as a human, try to extract features. Like, okay, we have a picture here, a full body here, but it's kind of uh, learning just shapes. So it's the unsupervised learning basically is trying to extract features without telling the, the model about them. So try to find similarities, different things. And this is, uh, well, uh, there is one famous uh, machine learning, well, general artificial, artificial intelligence person called, uh, ah, I forgot the name, it's Joseph, uh, Jeff Hinton, who is basically the inventor of the deep learning and this kind of stuff. And he said this is the future because it's a bit more difficult, but the results could be amazing. And one of the examples of the results is like this. It's like if you teach some machine model to learn what is a zebra and then another one to learn what is a horse, and you start with a picture of a zebra and do small modifications until the second machine learning algorithm say it's a horse, you can get this kind of funny thing. We are not going to do this anyway. We are just going to do clustering. But uh, you can use this to anomaly detection, to dimensional reduction, to a lot of, to get the shape of something and then project this in the future. It's like if I know the shape of an order, I could predict future orders in base of this shape. So it's, it's quite useful, but it's uh, still a kind of uh, difficult to understand thing. So clustering is like basically grouping, but you can use this also for quantization, like for instance, colors or things. And we will be doing in the workshop, we will be trying two algorithms. It's k-means and dbscan. K-means is just uh, really, really easy to understand algorithm, which basically is you start, let's wait to interaction one, come on, oh, zero, okay, we are programmers, zero. So you start to random centers and in each iteration, the center moves slowly until a point of convergence. This is good because it's like quite easy to, at the end, the center is showing like this is yellow, this is red. There are three groups. But the problem is first, you have to tell the algorithm there should be three groups there. So it to start with the centers. And the second thing, if you see this is kind of Mickey Mouse shape, so actually some points here could be part of this group and not part of the Mickey Mouse error. So it's not that perfect, but it's quite easy to understand and quite useful. The other one we will be trying is DBSCAN, which is density basis, a special clustering of application with noise, which basically is like try to find similar density spaces. Also, this is two-dimensional spaces, but usually we will be doing like several dimensional space. And the problem here is like 
it's uh, easy to understand, but it's not easy to tune, because it's like you have to tell the algorithm what's density. Density is this should be at least uh, one point distant from that. How many samples should be in a group to consider it a group? The good thing, on the uh, you know, on other hand, is that this scan can show you outsiders like this, like, okay, this is not part of any group. While the previous algorithm came in, we'll try to set this as part of this cluster, for instance. Ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there is a problem here. The problem is, I told you, like, oh, there are five steps, and we, and I spoke about, uh, I told you about the second step, the algorithm, and the funny part, but we have to start with the kind of boring part, which is not boring at all, which is data preparation. It's like we have some data, actually you should be downloading some uh, Ula Box data set with orders, with uh, 30,000 orders, I think. <coughs> and uh, first we have to see what's the data, because it's like uh, the analogy could be when you want to teach a baby, you have to choose some good examples for the baby. It's like if you just try to teach with random examples, perhaps he's not going to learn as fast as you want to. So for the computers, uh, it's the same thing. Basically, you need to, most of the algorithms uh, try to or expect all the features to come with values between 0 and 1, so they are optimized for this. But also it's like, uh, for instance, here you have like the same order of magnitude here and here. And it makes no sense that you have here from 0 to 1 and here from 0 to 1 million, because when you are going to like calculate the distance between this and this, will make no sense at all, because it will mean not here, here, but here and one million meters or over there. So it makes no sense. Also remove noisy cases. We will see one example in the workshop and other processes which are kind of boring, so I will not explain. And also really, really important and perhaps the part which takes more time is exploring the data. It's like try to show or to plot the data to see what's the problem, to see uh, the shape of the data before showing to the algorithm. It's like, it's not the, and, and it's really important to see in images because we are humans, we are vi vi uh, visual learners, so it's not the same that somebody tells you, we get more orders at 22, like at 10 p.m., okay, here. But if you see the picture, it's like, okay, this makes sense because people are sleeping and then suddenly what happens here? What the hell is here? It's like, okay, this is Spain, people should be doing siesta or something. I don't know, why, why the hell suddenly the, like at, like at 2 or 3 p.m., we stop selling it. And this is the <laughs> second part. It's like you have to ask the, when you see this kind of thing, you have to ask the domain expert or the, or the people who provide the data. Because in this case, it's like in Nulabo's website, if you order, well, if you order an order up to two o'clock, you get a delivery the following day. Otherwise, you get a delivery two days later. So people buy and suddenly, oh, I will get the delivery two days later. I will not buy. These kind of things happen. Ah, this is the last one, which is uh, while doing this, 
I learned like it's really important again to explore and optimize data. You have to find the features that count because it's like usually the data provider will give you a lot of data and some data makes no sense, could be making sense or you have to do some engineering like okay if I know this edge case perhaps I can add another feature that is was the order order before or after two o'clock something like this on the other side uh, we have to avoid the what they call the curse of dimensionality which is like okay we have 400 different features we will input them in the algorithm that makes no sense because the algorithm will take I don't know centuries to find something useful so it's really interesting that to start small start easy and useful and and I will tell you uh, an example it's like one day I was speaking with one of these uh, business analysts in uh, department person in our company and I told him okay what are you doing oh no I'm trying to find the calculate the churn the churn is like if some customer will repeat buying and uh, say okay what are you doing well you know we have 400 features and we are throwing it, that data to the algorithm say that makes no sense no but it's kind of difficult it's like you don't have an easy insight to start with oh yeah of course if somebody orders like uh, 200 euros or more he will usually buy again so okay then we can program this we can use this we can know that if somebody is adding items 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 and it's over 200 euros you don't need to give him any promotion because he will end up buying this is not really ethics but <laughs> you know this is business and the uh, the last one is like it's really really easy to find skills at work to try different algorithms to try different ideas because usually bosses now is because it's the new hot thing the bosses could tell like the investors oh, you know we are using machine learning and on the other side usually the results are quite interesting and it's quite easy actually I have used at Toolbox we have used machine learning for from stupid things like estimating the number of boxes your order will have instead of okay you order this 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 and this and I know this is like one meter long and then if I put in a box no this is a really complex calculation okay you have spent 200 euros in this and that should be two boxes things like this or what I'm what we will be doing the, in the workshop the customer segmentation so now it's time for you to do and for me to shut up Question?